The Chinese genomics company BGI Group used the NIFTI test, which stands for Non-Invasive Fetal Trisomy Test, to collect the genes of more than 8 million pregnant women from 52 countries around the world, and shared them with the Chinese communist military. On July 7th, Reuters disclosed that an investigation of publicly available documents revealed that the BGI group had collaborated with the CCP military to collect extensive genetic data from prenatal genetic testing. More than 8 million pregnant women in at least 52 countries around the world have used BGI's products. NIFTI is a non-invasive prenatal test that screens blood samples to detect conditions such as Down syndrome. According to BGI reports, since 2013, BGI has been promoting its NIFTI screening products worldwide, including in Europe, Canada, Australia, India, Thailand, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, but not in the United States. This test is very popular in the world, with more than 8 million pregnant women worldwide having had NIFTI testing to date. Upon reviewing the program code of BGI, Reuters found that in addition to genetic information on the fetus and mother, the testing procedure also captures personal information, such as the client's country of residence, height, weight, and medical history, but not the name. While BGI claims that it has never provided information obtained from NIFTI tests to Beijing authorities, its privacy agreement states that it may share information collected when it is directly related to China's national security or national defense. Reuters also found that the genetic data of more than 500 pregnant women who underwent maternity examinations, including those in Europe and Asia, are stored in the Shenzhen National Gene Bank, managed by BGI, and is funded and managed by the Beijing authorities. Will BGI share these data with the CCP? Let's take a look at the relationship between BGI and the CCP. On January 30th, 2021, Reuters reported that from investigations of over 40 documents and papers, they found that BGI has been cooperating with the CCP's military and participated in a number of projects for them. In 2010, BGI began collaborating with Chinese military hospitals to study the fetal genome, and has published more than a dozen joint studies with the Chinese military researchers to test and improve its prenatal testing technology. In 2011, clinical trials of the NIFTI test were conducted at the PLA General Hospital in Beijing and the 3rd Military Medical University in Chongqing. In 2015, BGI and the Academy of Military Medical Sciences were awarded a patent for low-cost coronavirus detection. The inventor of the patent is BGI Chief Infectious Disease Scientist Chen Weijun, who has ties with the Academy. BGI also has a number of researchers working with the National University of Defense Technology. In 2018, BGI published a study that analyzed NIFTI data, mapped the flow of viruses among Chinese women, and identified signs of mental illness in them, including singling out minority ethnic groups such as Tibetans and Uyghurs for genetic links and traits. The study was done using military supercomputers. In March 2020, the paper interviewed BGI founder Wang Jian, who described the birth and rise of BGI as a result of Wang combining the promotion of genetic technology with the political goals of the Chinese Communist Party. In 1999, Wang Jian returned to China after studying in the U.S. and founded BGI Group in Beijing. In 2001, Jiang Zemin met with Wang Jian and others at Zhongnanhai. In 2003, Hu Jintao, then leader of the CCP, met with Wang Jian. In November of the same year, the Chinese Communist Party integrated BGI into the Chinese Academy of Sciences and established a specialized institute. Later, after a falling out between the BGI and CAS over the procurement of equipment, Wang Jian brought BGI to Shenzhen in 2007 to restart. Because of the growing international influence of Wang's team, the Shenzhen government invested hundreds of millions of dollars and the Beijing authorities also increased their support. With the help of the CCP, BGI has established 58 genetic sequencing laboratories in 18 countries as of last August, while exporting a steady stream of genetic sequencing products to the world. So why is the CCP collecting human genes? What is their purpose? U.S. government advisors pointed out that research on human genetic data could help the Chinese Communist Party become the world leader in pharmaceuticals, while also strengthening the genes of soldiers for the military. As we know, in early 2020, the coronavirus broke out in Wuhan, and it is still raging on today. 
The CCP authorities did not announce to the public until January 20th that the virus was transmissible. And before that, the Communist Party had been saying that it was preventable and controllable. However, on January 14th of 2020, the official website of BGI publicly stated that it had developed a nucleic acid test for the new coronavirus and donated 10,000 test kits to Wuhan on January 24th. On January 26th, Wang Jian entered Wuhan, which had been severely closed to the public, to help the CCP authorities build an inflatable testing laboratory. In addition, BGI has sold and donated hundreds of millions of kits for testing of the coronavirus to various regions around the world. In August 2020, six months after the outbreak, BGI publicly stated that in the past six months, they had exported 350 million rapid test kits to 180 countries and established laboratories in many countries. The CCP took advantage of the urgent need for testing kits to sell Chinese-made kits to the world, making BGI one of the biggest beneficiaries of this pandemic. At this point, BGI has left the Western research institutes and pharmaceutical companies far behind and has really been made the world's pharmaceutical leader by the CCP. As you probably know, in the early stages, many countries gave very low feedback on the effectiveness of Chinese-made test kits, with the lowest being only 20 to 30 percent. But later on, there were fewer such reports. Perhaps this indicates that the test kits were ineffective because they were based on Chinese genes, since the CCP did not possess the genes of foreigners in the early stages. But after collecting their genes, BGI was able to develop new products based on the foreigners' genes, which is why they're more effective. Would this be a possible interpretation? William Ivanina, former director of the National Counterintelligence and Security Center, warned the United States before he left office last year that through DNA, the CCP could know a person's current and future health status and what therapeutic drugs they need. Controlling biological data would allow complete control over the direction of medical development, a serious threat to the national security of the United States. In addition, BGI has already developed a test before the CCP announced human-to-human -human transmission of the virus. So when did they get the virus samples? Chinese media Cai Xin reported that BGI received an unidentified pneumonia sample from Wuhan as early as December 26, 2019, and discovered after genetic sequencing that it was a novel coronavirus with 80% gene sequence similarity to SARS. The earliest mention from the CCP of this unidentified pneumonia was in an internal notification on December 30th, but BGI already received the virus samples several days earlier. In other words, BGI received the virus samples as soon as the virus emerged, or perhaps even earlier, and then developed the virus testing reagents. It seems like BGI really has become the leader in drug production. The Chinese Communist Party military publicly talked about genetic weapons a few years ago. On November 10, 2017, the PLA Daily had an op-ed in the Science and Technology Frontier section, titled, How Genetic Weapons Could Influence Future Warfare. The article discusses the development of a new generation of biological weapons by modifying the genetic code of disease-causing microorganisms through gene editing technology. The article claims that these new viruses and bacteria will serve as strategic deterrents. The author of the article, Cao Shiyang, is a researcher at the Academy of Military Medical Sciences. In the article, he points out that the genetic code of the new viruses and bacteria is known only to the designer, and it's difficult for the other side to decipher it in time and develop a new vaccine to fight against it. Cao Shiyang also said, even if the vaccine is updated, there is still a constant flow of new genetic weapons ready to go. The speed of vaccine development must not be able to catch up with the speed of poisoning, and this is obviously extremely unfavorable to the other side. In order to illustrate the benefits of genetic weapons, the article points out that there are several features. For example, small size, low cost, no destruction of non-living matter, and so on. Two other points are highlighted. One is that genetic weapons are more contagious and lethal, and can increase the lethality rate to about 100%. The other is that they are highly concealable and can be made into a time bomb with a set time of up to 10 years. In his article, Cao points out that genetic weapons are bioatomic bombs with enormous lethality and can achieve military objectives without using a single soldier. 
A growing number of the world's leading scientists and virologists now suspect that the virus is likely to have come from the Wuhan laboratory. One of them, former CDC director and virologist Robert Redfield, told CNN that the new coronavirus most likely came from the Wuhan laboratory leak. On July 7th, Radio France published an interview with Cochier, an expert in genetic evolution research, who has signed several open letters calling for an investigation into the origin of the virus. In 2000, Arnold Schwarzenegger starred in a science fiction film titled The Sixth Day. The film describes the near future, where human technology has developed to the point that any creature, including humans, can be cloned. In the film, the protagonist, Adam Gibson, returns home to find a human clone exactly like himself, having taken over his home and living with his family. Now, let's take a look at the following report and compare it to the movie to see if there are any similarities. On March 4th, 2020, the paper published an article titled, After the City Closure, The Billionaire Who Infiltrated Wuhan. It says that the founder of BGI, Wang Jian, actually entered Wuhan after the city's closure. At the entrance of the main hall, Wang Jian placed a sculpture of a mammoth with four words written on it. Exist forever, live forever. This was Wang Jian's lifelong dream. In the article, Wang Jian said, what was the ultimate dream of those ancient emperors? Was it not to cultivate and achieve immortality? Wang Jian believes that immortality is not impossible. He said, I have long preserved my cells, so once there's a breakthrough in technology, then we can create another Wang Jian. The article also reports that at the 2017 Deep Business Conference, Wang Jian said, in the next 5 to 10 years, we can chemically synthesize any life. This is not a joke. Artificial life may progress faster than artificial intelligence. Whether you like it or not, it's here. Notably, since 2015, the Chinese Communist Party has severely restricted access to Chinese genetic data by foreign researchers. In 2019, the CCP explicitly stated that genetic data is a national security matter.